Well, welcome back. It's been a while since I've uh, had a chance to, or the time, all the space to record a video. And today we're having a look at the Blitzkrieg Legend. It's a game that I've played, uh, it's from MMP. Uh, it's part of the OCS system. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a game that I've played two or three times several years ago. And I played the, the campaign game and was very early into the... OCS system and dealing with supply and overruns and movement and you know proper combat and using air correctly and all the rest of it so this will be a lot of fun to sort of revisit this title and <clears throat> excuse me and have a look at uh, <clears throat> have a look at how the system plays and how this game plays uh, just out of fun for fun right I was looking for an interesting scenario to play that covered uh, the Battle of France in 1940. And I've been reading the Rommel papers and I've read, uh, there's a, probably the first, I think it's the first two chapters maybe deal with uh, this particular campaign and, and Rommel's efforts, uh, which he would be down here. Uh, Rommel's efforts in this campaign. And obviously it's all written from his perspective and context. And then Little Heart, <coughs> Uh, the military author offers contextual comment or corrections or amplifications when uh, Rommel sort of gets off track a little bit, right? When he's, when he, he's t writing or talking about something that he's actually incorrect on. So Little, uh, I think it's Little, uh, Hart gets into that and, and fixes a lot of those things and actually adds a lot of, a lot of uh, content. So it's not just... A sentence correction there might be two or three paragraphs so it's pretty interesting so anyway I was looking at oh can this title help me see what Rommel <clears throat> Rommel did in his uh, efforts to cross the Meuse here and I was actually curious about the the, the full uh, effort to sort of I think they ended up in Lille which is uh, just off screen right there there's a white cross uh, up there I could probably zoom in but you're gonna see a bunch of the backyard up there. So right, um, <clears throat> or front yard, depending on how you look at it, uh, there, right up to there. But this scenario ends at the edge of this map here. So we'll be dealing with sort of the Charleroi zone and all, all of that stuff. Now, here's what's interesting about this particular scenario. It's scenario 6.4. So it's, it's focusing on the 4th Army's efforts. Uh, and the third Panzer Corps, so that would be um, Hoff was the the, the general uh, running the third Panzer Corps, and that's why we have. Uh, I think it was Hoff, right? That's why we have. Where is uh, now? Where's Rommel gone? <clears throat> okay, so we have Rommel seventh, and I can't recall off the top of my head the the fifth Panzer uh, uh, leader, but he he's here as well. So they start quite. A, they're within. A couple of miles, two and a half, uh, five miles of each other, thereabouts. Each hex is two and a half miles here. Each turns two days. If you're familiar with OCS, you'll know that and know that this is a different scale for this particular uh, module. And it's, I think it's actually started to become a, a standard. But <clears throat> then there's also third Panzer a little bit further north. And I've got 20th motorized uh, just off screen here to your right. And where's 4th? Oh, and 4th Panzer is here as well. So there are four Panzer divisions for us to work with. And the goals for this scenario are pretty straightforward. It, it's capture of airfields and city hexes. But like I said, we're looking to try and explore Rommel's uh, movements uh, across the, the, this period of time in the scenario, which we run from the 10th of May to the 16th of May, so just four turns, and so we want to we want to see how this all came together, what perhaps uh, some of the options and choices that the uh, French might have, and the Allies might have to counter not only his efforts but obviously some of the other folks. So I was putting out uh, some markers to give me a feel for. If, for instance, if Rommel uh, ran up through St. Vith and around here <coughs> executed an overrun in this hex, which they can do uh, based on the movement point cost, and then they could end up adjacent to this mobile artillery, this, this cavalry, well, this mobile artillery here, which is right at the Orth uh, uh, River Bridge 
bridgehead. So if we could do a, a combat there and end up across that hex uh, and into the, on that side of the river there, that would be excellent. And then similarly, with fifth, uh, we could we could press in this way towards Liege here. Uh, we've got two special ops that we're allowed to run with this scenario, so that can uh, diminish or minimize or or remove fortress hexes so we could do that there then potentially fifth could potentially attack here or here that's out in the open that that unit is pretty heavily exposed and see if we can't close in on this very quickly and then potentially with some exploit movement if we get lucky uh, we can attack into Liege as well, and at least along this side of the river. I doubt we'll get across in uh, in that turn. I probably should zoom in a little bit there so you can see the terrain. Sorry about that, gang. <clears throat> you can tell it's been a couple of weeks since I've recorded a video, or a couple of days, I guess. I don't even know how long when I did the last one. Uh, so there's that there. Then on this side of the uh, this side of the equation here. With 4th Panzer, Panzer, I was just going to move them up and try and get uh, wiggle my way into this, this hex here. That's a tough little fortress at strength of 6. But if we get lucky with the die roll for the Special Ops guys, we might be able to crack that and then get some uh, beneficial attacks uh, on these folks. I would obviously have to support some of this with uh, some infantry units that could come up, reach out and touch someone uh, on on doing a combined attack with uh, Fourth Panzer across the river, which kind of leads me then to what do I do with Third Panzer, which is where did he go? I'm off camera somewhere. Here he is. <clears throat> Third Panzer. We could put him in reserve. They could uh, do the follow through and break through here. Uh, at, at the river crossing at Mars, I think that's Mars, uh, Maastricht, and then, and or, or we could run and try and hit this here. Now this this is a very weak Dutch unit border uh, battalion, so I, I'm tempted just to leave that to uh, this infantry these infantry guys to clean up, and I've got a. Uh, I've got an MG unit here that I could almost do a overrun on it three to one, but it's a little bit risky. Actually, I can't because it's a it's over a river, so we can't do that. But nevertheless, I could bring uh, I could bring twentieth motorized up into this area, also put them in reserve, and they could push through here as well. Uh, so we kind of need to be sweeping this direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sweeping in this way here, and I'm looking to try and cut through here, isolate all these guys and force them out of supply and then out of the game as quickly as we can. It's, it'll, it'll be easy enough to punch the uh, punch the Dutch out of the way, and then they're out of the game. There's, there's another map that goes north of here and covers the northern section, and there's one, the, the, this map, <clears throat> this map extends south here as well. It unfolds uh, that way. And then there's another map, another full map, obviously, to uh, further to the east. So with our interest and focus on Rommel, we'll be looking at how, how do we press in here? What else can I bring to the table with Rommel? Can I have... Uh, I was actually looking at all the units that are back in here, and I, I think I can pull together a little calf group of there's a AT section here, uh, an MG battalion here, and another uh, that's an armored uh, AT formation there. I can grab those three units and maybe a fast moving infantry uh, formation. One of these guys moves at five somewhere. Uh, this guy here <clears throat> and push them up as a supporting force to assist Seventh Panzer. Assist Rommel's efforts there, and try and drive drive uh, up here, or at least threaten uh, threaten this side of the 
this side of the French defences to stop them all from collapsing on top of uh, top of Rommel. So I'm kind of interested to see what that might be. This divisional lines, these markers here, represent the edge of the map. So I've got to kind of I've got to kind of weave my way uh, around here. There's no uh, no big flanking looping maneuvers because we've got von Kleist's uh, formation is to the left here, and Rommel was really covering his right flank. Uh, for the for the primary and main attack to the Sedan and the Muse, which is right there, there's Sedan there, and that's where the the famous crossing occurred there. And the way <clears throat> the way they work it out in this game to to make that achievable is there's an optional rule that allows the Germans to get a double turn, and with that double turn, I believe it's possible for for that that uh, that to be successful. There's a lot of units that end up on the board here in this southern section when you're playing this full full campaign, and it takes a lot of time to get through that first turn there. So I'm kind of excited to play this because there's a lot less units. Uh, we'll be we should be able to crank through a turn the first turn today. Now I'm I'm going to mess around with this and and I may reset and see if it's better for me to go this way and try and attack fourth calf or. Or whatnot. We're going to kind of mess around with uh, counting stuff out and then rolling some dice and see if that's effective. How do we apply the air uh, to uh, make it uh, uh, help us DG some of these units so that they're a little softer when we attack them, disorganize them, right? Uh, so we'll we'll be looking at how we how we can achieve all that and then doing some what ifing that I, I may replay uh, some sections of the the gameplay if it if it doesn't work out the way we want it to right uh but we'll just explore the options that's one of the cool things of playing solo is you can do stuff like that all right uh let's go roll some dice talk to you guys soon i hope you guys all have a very merry christmas it is indeed uh where are we at the 12th or the 13th of december i think so uh, i'll get this out today to you guys and uh, hopefully i'll get this finished by oh i hope thursday or friday and we'll we'll get this done Ciao.